Hello citizens, this is DragonX coming to you with another tutorial for you beginners out there. This one's just to help you get started on doing what you most want to do and that's go fly a ship and get outside of your habitat and not be so lost. It is a little bit more confusing now that they have multiple different places that you can launch from from when you originally start. You'll see um, this is the entry into the PU and no, does that, that does not mean the place smells bad. This is the the persistent universe so if you hear that that's what pu stands for ptu stands for pers persistent test universe so we're going to go into the persistent universe today uh, by clicking this and normally you're going to see spaceports when you very first start in you're going to get an option of area 18 lorville or new babbage and those three are going to be different spaceports that you can initially launch the game from it's only selectable one time or if you do a major character reset or something with the devs and you'll essentially be spawning into the last place that you logged out after that point. So for now, I've already logged in one time, so you might have another place to go log in. I'm gonna walk through the basics on how to do that on this video and the next videos, I'll go show you how to get away and out of each of those major spaceports that you initially spawned from because that can be a little confusing as well. But this will go over some of the basic mechanics. I've also got screen tips enabled, so you'll be able to see my mouse here as I'm clicking. And if I do any double click actions, you'll see this pop up in the purple in the top left corner. So let's do it. We're gonna go right into the Stanton system. Um, hangers right now, these are just a quick tip. These are in the future viewable so you can go look at your ships and go look around them outside of the game there's more to come with that uh, it hasn't been working for a couple of patches but that's what those are for mostly we're going to go into the spaceports and we're going to click stanton system and you want to find your server that you want to join i personally like to choose my servers uh, instead of click best best is not a bad option but if i'm in the us i'm going to pick a us server that way if there's some server instability i'm going to know hey i was in the us i know that those servers were not stable so let me try the european or australian servers in the future some of you guys might be out of the country you don't see usa you might see na or north american servers there so for me being in the US, I'm gonna go ahead and click that and let's go ahead and hit visit location. There's a few ways I can join my friends here at this point with this friends list over in the right hand side. You're able to click those and right click them and join session in progress as long as the server's not full. And we all hope for the day that we're gonna have unlimited servers. But as of right now, you're capped at 50 players per server. So as you're joining your friend, uh, friends, uh, make sure you're not so popular that you got more than 50 people you're trying to play with all the time or you will be sad. All right, so we're gonna get loaded in. You're gonna see me start off in a habitat and then we're gonna go from the habitat over to take off in the ship and I'm gonna be doing all mouse and keyboard today and for most of the series of these videos as by the time you invest in flight sticks and flight sim tools and all that kind of stuff, you'll probably be advanced enough that you're not gonna need some of the basic instruction there. But here we go, we are in the hab. You're seeing the readout uh, come across on my HUD on the bottom left. And just moving my mouse around, um, I'm able to steer my head as, in with, as within most games. So here, as I'm getting out of the bed, you just press Y and that's gonna allow you to stand up and start to move around or ambulate and be able to walk. And I'm using my WASD uh, for directionals and then mouse. So as you see, basic controls like this. And then what I'm gonna do is go directly to the door and I'm gonna open that and go out. However, there are, is an F4 function that will allow you to see yourself from a back to way standpoint and see what you look like. And you can walk around and move with the, the third person. There's two sets of um, two sets of third person views. So you get your first person view one zoom out and two zooms out so you can actually use your z to free look around and look at your character and look at it from different directions which uh, as you get into the game i'm sure you'll be taking screenshots and it's pretty awesome maybe we'll go take a quick screenshot example and show you how this works okay so let's leave in the hab on um, these control panels like this that you see and interact with you're going to hold down f and then you're gonna click um, on those panels that allow you to enter and go through different um, 
doors that you're able to go in. You can see like these are habs that are assigned to somebody else and I can't get in them no matter what. And so if I go back to my same exact hab, which I have to go find, then I could potentially open that because that was assigned to me. But all these are assigned to other players, so it's not gonna give you just open free access to those. However, not needed. 100% once you leave your hab, you're not gonna be going back into it anyway. So regardless of where I'm at, most of the most of the hangars that you go to will have some sort of elevator system to get down onto the primary floor. They're located in different places. Again, I'll shoot another video with the three primary launch pads and let you see that. In this case, I'm gonna just call the elevator. Um, there are now two different elevator panels that are in the game that uh, are different looking. So are different controls that they're going to update to a similar system soon. So again, now I hover with the F, hold F down. It gives me this ability to access uh, the touchscreen things and I'm gonna hit lobby. Okay, that's gonna get me down to the basic, um, that'll get me down to the bottom floor of any location. So this particular one, I don't even know where I'm at. Uh, to be honest, I, I don't know where I logged out at. So we're gonna see. Um, you can see, obviously, you know, take time and go around and explore. There's uh, shops that you can buy things as you gain some money and funds to be able to upgrade your ship and your personal weapons and things like that. And that's what I've spawned into. There's admin offices like this that you can see. Oh, there's, you know, there's... Um, uh, ability to go in there and purchase uh, it, uh, inventory to transfer to other locations and so on and so forth as we get further into the game. For now, I'm just going to be heading towards the uh, place to go call my ship up. So I'm going to run around. It may look like I'm, I'm, I don't know where I'm going because I'm on a station that I don't have memorized. So I just basically scan around and I go through the continuing hallways to get to uh, common area where, okay, now we've gotten to a common area. It looks like there's some additional stuff that way. And then I can turn this way. And there are the computer screens that I want to look for as I'm starting up into the game, no matter where I'm at, they're going to be different ones in different places. Again, look for a future video with the description of these multiple ones or multiple, um, landing ports. So let's go over here to, uh, vehicle retrieval console. Again, hold down my F to interact are going to personal inner thoughts, whatever you want to call that. And we're going to click use. And here is a bunch of ships that I can call up. You're probably not going to have this many unless you went crazy and uh, pledged a significant amount to begin with to take off uh, with the game. But normally you'll start with one. Currently they're loaning out a freelancer to every player to solve a bug that they're having. But normally you're going to have your starter ship and or uh, the freelancer. So. Now we've got this called up. I've already entered this. So now I just have to hit retrieve and it's going to tell me where my ship is going. We're going to wait for it, wait for it. And there we go. My ship is going to be waiting at pad three. Just make sure you make a note of that because it's not a hangar, but this is a pad. And then I'm going to back away. And what do you know? There's, um, you can see elevator panels over there, over there over there all these elevators i can run to any of these because these are not elevators they're wonk evaders i can call this elevator up and wait and here's my elevator arrived and remember i had to go to pad three there's hangers which are different if you have a larger ship it may spawn it into a hangar instead of a pad on some bases so just keep that in mind some bases are all hangers some bases are uh, especially the spaceports are a mixture of hangers and pads. Some places are just pads. So we know to go to pad three and you can kind of trace the little uh, ship indicator. There's the Aegis Avenger Titan that I called up and I'm able to uh, see that I approach it and I get out of the elevator at my location and boom, there we go. We've got our ship that we can see. I'm using shift to sprint. If you see that pop up there all the time, that's basically what shift is allowing me to do. So depending on your ship, I kind of cheated there just a little bit because I know where I'm entering, but depending on your ship, you might have different entry points. A lot of those, a good place to start is generally by the cockpit. And you can see if it's a exterior entry ship that enters you directly into the cockpit area, you'll have the ability to open the ladder, open the pilot canopy or enter ship. Enter ship's probably the most functional thing and what you'll use most of the time at this time 
because it auto uh, auto enters the ship for you uh, regardless if whatever sequence you do. Now, in this particular ship, I also have a secondary entrance, which happens in uh, quite a few ships. This is one of the more recommended ships uh, to start off with if you're able to fork out just a little extra money. So I'm actually entering the back end of the ship and it allows me to go through and look, there's my bed and oh, there's my cockpit. Okay, so I'm gonna go back out and show you guys for some of you who don't have the um, extra entry and you only have the cockpit entry, you're gonna be doing it a little bit different way. So again, just to access all this, you'll see that F popping up there, F and clicking allows me to access those personal inner thoughts is what they're called in the game. And I can uh, now go to the front and a lot of the single entry ships, the fighters, the smaller ships out there, you're just gonna hit enter ship and it's gonna go through an animation and pop you right in the pilot seat. Now, hopefully you guys have watched the keybind video and have sorted out at least some of the basic functions of this game before trying to jump in here and just go blow yourself up. But um, at this point, I'm just gonna hit R and ready up my ship. Uh, I can also, I'm gonna power my ship down and turn the engines off with the U and the I commands or hotkeys that I just happen to know. I also have the personal inner thoughts ability to look at some of the controls within the ship. If you want some more of that experience, as opposed to just using all the hotkeys, I can go that flight ready button and click it. It's just like hitting R. And there you go. You can see my HUD has lit up, lit up. my uh, engines are powering up and so on and so forth. And I am ready to take off at this point. So I'm going to, we're going to take off very safely and just strafe straight up with the space key. And then uh, you can see I'm tapping it a little bit to adjust my height. And then I'm going to press N for retracting my landing gear. And again, as I've shown on other videos, you can go from third person view by hitting F4 and see the landing gear retract and whatnot. As I mentioned in prior videos about the HUD, you can see my landing gear indicator right there. This is the older style HUD, which I think they're gonna be moving away from before long. So at any rate now, just W, uh, you can see mouse wheel up. I'm moving that uh, speed limiter up and down on the left. And this is, uh, now I'm actually getting to uh, fly my ship around a little bit. You can kind of see my clicks over there as I'm steering around. And there we go. I am now officially taken off. I'm in, um, I'm out of armistice zone, so I can actually weapons free at this point. And there you go, we're flying. Now, the next thing you're gonna figure out is how the heck do I get anywhere? It's a really big game. Even though we're really only on a sandbox version with one system, it's a really, really big game. So let's talk about how to move around the universe so you can actually get somewhere functional. For instance, I'm on a space station and there's a planet below me. If I fly down to this planet, keep in mind that this planet is, uh, let me see if I can find it exactly and give you guys an actual readout. That planet is literally 1,123 kilometers away from me to the center of the planet. So I need to fly down in the neighborhood of 900 kilometers, okay? If I just manually fly down, if I'm just to, uh, if I'm just to use my afterburner with W and fly down to this, there's your speed reading on the left, right? That's showing you at full speed, I'm gonna go ahead and hyper up to full speed on this ship is 1113 meters per second. Now, start figuring that out to fly down 900 kilometers. Guys, that is a long time that I'm getting a thousand kilometers per second and I gotta fly 9,000 kilometers. So you start spending a, a significant amount of time. Okay, you can do that, but the way you motivate around and move around in this game is all about the quantum drive. There's a couple different things you wanna know. You wanna know both accesses to this. Uh, you can see, just a segue, I've got uh, the altimeter showing. That means I got within 100,000 um, meters of the surface. So it's telling me that, hey, this is my altimeter. I'm starting to get into atmosphere. And once I get uh, above that 100,000 mark, you'll see it drop away. 
but that's just telling me, hey, I'm starting to approach the ground, be wary, you, you know, you're, you're dealing with the effects of gravity and so on and so forth. All right, so back to the quantum travel, uh, hyperspace travel, whatever you want to call it in the game, it's mostly referred to as quantum drives and quantum travel. I've got some off color people chatting in chat. Let's get rid of them. Got to enjoy that. But we'll do um, the two different methods. One, you can press B and this is going to start spooling for you. And if you don't have a route locked in, you'll see every possible quantum uh, location you can jump to. Now, as we talked about, you guys saw kind of that 1100 meters down. I'm going to jump over to this OM3, which is orbital marker number three, and just show you how quick quantum drive really goes. Once I've got it spooled up by clicking B the one time, you can see uh, now it says spooling complete and my calibration's ready. I'm locked in on my target. I'm ready to go. Now I hold B and it enters quantum drive. You'll start to hear and see animations and then poof. Now, obviously travel a little bit quicker than a thousand meters per second there. And we've just traveled um, across almost 1300 kilometers in that time. Okay, so that's one way to do that. And just a side note, just for general mapping purposes, understand that each moon, planet, or anything out there has got a set of orbital markers around it labeled OM1 through 6. The way it works is they define the three main axes of a planet or moon. OM1 and OM2 are opposite each other. And then 90 degrees to that, OM3 and 4 are opposite each other. And then 90 degrees to that, OM5 and 6 are opposite each other. So there you go, OM6 on one side of the moon planet, excuse me, and OM5 on the opposite side. So that's one axis that the planet is rotating on or potentially identifies the locations. So like I say, you've got another OM here, there's OM2, so dead opposite of that. I should see OM3, oh, excuse me, OM1. Sorry, I said the pair's wrong. One and two are paired, three and four are paired, and five and six are paired. So that identifies like how the planets cross section. If you remember, I am sitting at OM3 right now. So dead opposite the planet is gonna be OM4. You can see I'm kind of highlighting it. I can't jump to that because there's a planet in between me and that uh, marker, but that's dead opposite. So that's how the planet is cross section. Just a general reference so you're not confused later on. Um, also, I've got targets that are these are targets that are on the planet I can jump to as long as I'm at jump height for that planet or moon. Most moons are around 3,000 meters high. Most planets are just over 10,000 meters high. I can then jump around the planet and we'll look at that too. Uh, I'll show you right now, in fact, we're gonna jump to this empty data center. And if, as you can see, I like to roll around so I can see the uh, HUD a little bit better. So I can see that my spooling is complete, my calibration is ready. I'm gonna hold down B and you're gonna see me travel around the planet very quickly. And whoosh, there we go. Put all forward power to the thrusters. All right, so this one is uh, actually on this side of the planet. So I jumped right down to that and we're showing about 32 kilometers, 30 kilometers out from that location. So I can manually fly in the rest of the way if that's my ultimate destination. Or I can say, oh, well, you know what? I want to go somewhere else on the planet. So I hit my tap my B and spool up again. And let's look for some other locations. Here's another empty data center, 879. And like I say, I can spin around and try to get those uh, HUDs a little bit clear, but you can see I'm spooled up and calibrated and I'm a jump. And as long as you can target the item and it's showing in the targetable color in that light blue, I'm able to jump to it and the, the computer is gonna figure out what I need to do. As you can see, I'm not flying directly to the planet, but I'm flying around the planet. So I actually uh, made quite a jump and moved halfway around the planet in one quick jump. So that is to keep in mind, if you wanna travel around a planet, please don't try to manually fly. Uh, you're always better off flying up to the quantum height, which is like I say, 3000 or so on most 
moons and around 10,000 on most planets. But you can see I'm sitting at 13,000, so I'm free to quantum at this point and pretty quick travel that way. If you try to manually fly between things, you're literally gonna spend hours. I can't express that enough that this game is really, really big. And if you're traveling at a thousand or 500 meters per second, you gotta travel 900 kilometers. It's a really, really long manual flight. So try to use quantum in every case. Now, so that's manually locating things. Now let's back out and look at the universe. I can hit F2 and go directly to the universe map. Uh, sometimes it's hard to see. I'm wheeling down to be able to expand um, the entire system. Or I can, let me back out of that. I can enter again. I can hit um, uh, scroll mouse wheel up to zoom in, but I can also double right click and it will automatically zoom all the way out on the map. So let's figure out where I'm at right now. I can click this little guy up here just keep in mind there's hud elements that are all interactable you want to pay attention to um i can click this guy and it's going to zoom into my current location and if i don't know where i'm at i can slowly zoom out and see that here here at the end of this green line is my current location so i'm out here by this planet called microtech and let's say i want to travel and go see um let's go to one of the uh, nearby this is more of an asteroid. Um, I know it looks like a planet. It's really billed as more of a large asteroid like Pluto or something like that. So I can zoom into this. I clicked it one time and you can see this green line locked onto that target. That means my quantum is firm and I can click set route at this point. Okay, but more, more likely you're gonna be picking a location on a planet that you wanna go to. So I can go ahead and click that and click set route and it'll give me a multiple jump point you can see over here on the left that it's telling me it's 372.84 distance my current fuel is 583 i require 372 fuel excuse me that's not your distance rating that is your fuel rating how much consumption it's going to take in quantum fuel and if you remember from other videos there's quantum fuel and hydrogen fuel that you need to pay attention to and then the second jump is going to use basically zero fuel because it's a very very short quantum jump now that i've got that locked in i can hit f2 to jump out and we'll explore that menu just a little bit more once we get into quantum travel this is quite a bit further jump so when i look around it's got i don't see all those points that i did see when i click b and start spooling i don't see the dozens and dozens of points of interest that i can fly to anymore i just see the one that I am actually targeted because I have it mapped in. If I go, let's say I'm pointing the complete wrong direction, this is sometimes really hard to find. So pay attention to this, uh, especially with the color differences. If you see right up here, there's a little triangle that's indicating where I need to turn my ship to see that target that I selected. So there we go. I followed the little arrow, but sometimes it's really hard to see. Like if I go, uh, like right here, it's almost impossible to see that uh, triangular arrow because of the background that it's on. So as you see, I try to rotate around and move the colorations of my background around so I can see my HUD elements clearer. So if I'm down here, I would never know if I'm a new player, like where in the heck do I need to turn to find that target? I'm going to be hoping in the dark if I don't swing my ship around and start looking and going, oh, well, I got it on a darker background. Now I see that triangle, there we go. Now we've got ourselves targeted where we need to go. Again, it's only got the one target to go to, just like before, we're gonna tap B to spool up and then hold B to take off. Now that we're engaged in quantum travel, I'm gonna take, uh, I'll just give you guys an idea, that's 38 million kilometers. So you can imagine trying to fly that at a thousand meters per second, it'll be virtually impossible to do in uh, any reasonable amount of time. If you got a couple weeks to make those flights, great. But otherwise, quantum is the place to get everywhere. You can see it's starting to count me down. There are multiple stages of quantum jump depending on your engine and the ship type and class that you have. There's gonna be a lot of different things that you can do to speed those travels up. But right now you can see it's ticking away uh, pretty fast. I mean, a lot faster than a thousand meters per second. And it's going to accelerate into stage two and really start going. But this is, um, depending on your drive, as you advance in 
the game, you'll probably upgrade your drives if you, as you earn money and things like that, so it'll move faster. And there's a lot of upgradable components in your ship, which stay tuned, we'll go through that. That is a very in-depth target, to uh, in-depth ideology to min-max your ship and find all the locations. And you have to use assistive tools to really understand what's out there, but we'll get into that later. But for now, we're, uh, as I mentioned before, I hit F2 and it went to the map. I can zoom out and actually watch my travel when I hit F2. And, oh, and to move the map around, keep this in mind, right click moves the entire location of the map when I right click and drag. When I left click and drag, it's going to flip the um, orientation. So that's really handy to be able to find the different targets within the system. As I mentioned, there's only one system, but it's really, really big. You can see even in quantum travel, look how far. I mean, I've been in quantum travel for a minute and I've only gone that far and I've got to travel this far. So as it hits second stage, it'll start accelerating a little quicker. But anyway, that's kind of your map and how to navigate through that. You've got the options up here to set route like we used. You can use clear route if you say, oh, I clicked the wrong button, you can clear route and start back over or clear route and free up your uh, selectable navigator from the open map to be able to click B and see all the targets that are around you. Okay, so now that we've got that, just keep in mind, all this stuff is interactable. Um, you wanna look across the bottom, there's a few keys which we'll explore further in further episodes and understand exactly what they are. You've got comm link that you can click and go into chat. You've got uh, vehicle loadout manager, which as I talked about, this is where you're gonna go in and min max your ship out and we'll dig into that because that's a really, really deep target. And you'll start to see as it takes it a second to load up, you'll see the ship selector and say, I wanna edit um, the current ship that I'm in. If I don't touch anything, I can edit that right from here. It's telling me I've got these missiles, propulsion, you know, what type of drive I have installed right now, what systems I have installed, what weaponry I have installed and paint jobs uh, that are newly available as of patch 3.9. And there's a few, 3.91 in fact, I think, and I've got a um, Invictus special um, library on there now. You can then use this to flip your ship around to see what it looks like as you change the guns. You can see these. This is what's so cool about Star Citizen. As I see these guns, right, you can actually see when those are changed. So if I'm looking at this um, Mantis, uh, actually, let's go to weapon slot one, this Mantis right here, and I'm gonna change that to a Tarantula. We're gonna see right up here. Uh, we're gonna take that off of another ship. You can see that the visual actually changed because it is that in detail that it shows you your uh, edits in the ship loadout, just like with the paint. If I'm to go claim this, uh, change this to the Splinter Library, there you go. Now I've got a camo ship and I can then save it and then it locks in my changes. But we'll get into all that in much more detail, just killing some time while I'm in quantum travel. As you can see, I'm at 11 million kilometers now of the original, uh, more than halfway through the distance. Okay, next button down here is your equipment manager for your person. This is where you go in and set your clothing, your undersuit, your weapons, your armor, utility stuff. If you wanna add grenades, consumable med pens, which are always, uh, always a good thing to have is having med pens, oxygen pens, utility items, or you can add different things onto your person here. And then we go over to the map, which again, I hotkey directly into by hitting, uh, you can see how far we've traveled, by the way, just as an update, uh, by hitting F2, it automatically jumps to the screen. If you're to hit F1, for instance, I'm gonna hit F2 to close out. If I hit F1, it's gonna take me straight to the basic Moby Glass menu, and I'll show you how to enter that as well. So again, F1, and you can see it's the same menu, although it accesses different things. If I hit F11, it'll access, excuse me, directly to the comms menu. And that is just like clicking this first tab of the comm link. So it's just quick keys to get you in there, but don't don't worry about all that. You'll, you'll learn that as you go along. So start with clicking F1 or F2 to get you into the mobile glass. Okay, so the map, and then our next section is our journal, figuring out anything that's, uh, any missions I've completed or any updates that the game's given me. Okay, then my next one 
is LiveWorks, Modify Shipport Equipment. Not really used a whole lot right at this moment, but it will be implemented more in full as we go along later. And then we go to Vehicle Maintenance Service. This is important. Uh, we'll try to do that when we land to show you how to do that. That's important to know. And then you've got your mission tree. So this is your contract manager. You can view, accept, and create contracts. So this is a really place where you go to, um, one, learn the game. This is an open world game, so I can't stress enough that you can literally go do things for days and days and days and hours and hours and hours, and you don't have to do anything scripted. You can just play around in the game. However, these uh, contract managers, they start off with different levels as you open up more, because right now you can see I've only got a pro tem bounty contract, and that's telling me once I go do all that, there's a lot of extra, uh, description and lore with that. It'll open up additional missions that I don't see right now. Same thing with the mercenary. As I work through some of these basic missions, they will increase in value and increase in complexity and open up different things. You've got delivery missions right now. This is one of the things that I recommend very strongly to go get started off in the game go run a couple delivery missions and it'll open up enhanced payments on those delivery missions. The reason I really, really uh, advise everybody to start off doing delivery missions is you're able to go travel around the verse, get comfortable with getting in and out of your vehicle, interacting with things, you're uh, getting more comfortable with the mapping and all that type of stuff. Because as you can see with the deliveries, they're gonna say, we need you to take this shipment from her L4 over to crew L1. And I can see what that really means and locate on the map again, by clicking F2 or just the uh, skyline key down here. And look at that map, let's go, what am I doing again? I wanna go from, um, oh, that was a lost cargo. Let's, uh, let's see, her L4 over to crew L1 was that contract. So again, I go back to the map. Her L4, where are these things? So I start screwing around, uh, uh, moving the map around and I go, okay, there's her L4. So I got to travel from here to here. And then I'm going to need to take it over to crew L1, which is over here. So I need to fly here, pick up a package and head back over to here, right? So that's a good idea of how to start with the missions just go through and explore and do as many of these as possible the general ones are generally legal and then when you go to the personal ones just be i mean these are some really interesting um gameplay loops that you can go do just keep in mind some of these may be um doing some illegal or piracy type activities so just be careful about that because you can't accrue crime stats that's a whole nother thing that's enhanced here recently with the 3.9 patch that we'll get into. Now, let's say if I'm to accept this mission that we looked at, I hit accept offer, it's gonna go into this accepted tab. So if I get out of here and go, um, let's say I close this out, I'm gonna go ahead and start my quantum travel to my second destination. And we're just gonna get that moving. And I go, well, you know what? I need to go fuel up. So let me go land before I get going on this mission. So that's what I'm gonna emulate now. And then I go back and I say, um, all right, we've got a pretty short jump and we're gonna come into a space port called Levski. This is on the pl uh, planetoid uh, of Delamar. And again, once I jump in, I'm gonna accelerate down through afterburner um, by holding down W and using my general flight keys. Now, at this point, I'm gonna stop you and say, okay, I'm flying down there. I know that it's right there because I paid attention. However, it's hard to find because you're going across a planetoid, sometimes a planet or a moon that you're trying to fly to a base that's really hard to see. Levski is particularly easy. You can kind of see that little spot in the background. But if I'm to just say, get disoriented and go, oh, I got to find that again, where is it? Instead of scanning all the way through and trying to find that little bitty spot, which I just know where it is up here, but as you're starting, it's going to be hard to associate that. So what I do every time that I come out of quantum before I make my last jump is I hit F2 again. And because I knew that I already routed to that, um, I already routed to that uh, Levski. I just click set route again. Oh, excuse me. Nope, I got to reroute to it and make sure I've got that uh, location zoomed in. So let's clear route. 
we're gonna double click on this planet and start scrolling around because now I've got to find that location again. There we go, it's starting to pop up again. So scroll in. This is always the fun stuff about this game is you gotta get used to dealing with these. So I'm gonna highlight that Levski set route. There we go. We're gonna set route to there and you can see it came up on my quantum map. No, I can't quantum jump that far, but look what it's given me. It's given me a marker on the screen. And if I click B to start spool and just immediately click it again, it'll give me a distance calculator to that location with a marker on the screen. So that way it's really easy to find locations other than trying to manually sight and see exactly where you're going. So it can be complicated, but that will ease a lot of pain for you. Um, as you may have seen, like in a video that I've also done that says, how do you get to the different locations? So I'm going to fly in here. And these are some other important tips that you're any, any space station that you're approaching, you're not just going to jump right into it because there's nowhere. Um, this particular location actually does allow landing on the ground that I can run into it. But as I mentioned, I need fuel. So I need to get in one of these hangars. Um, you can see below there's, uh, those green triangles are indicating there's other players, but I need to request landing. So to do that, there's a couple different ways to go about this. If you looked at the MFD, um, episode that I had, I showed where you can change over to the different menus. Uh, again, this one is bugged, which is good to see because that happens quite a bit. It's not changing. So what I typically have to do here is get out of my seat and get back in. This is a pure workaround. It's not always the case, but a lot of ships will have that MFD panel bugged and it's not actually changeable. So hopping out of my seat and back in generally fixes it, but I'm gonna show you both ways to request landing so you never get stuck. Okay, so here we go again. We're gonna try this again by holding down F and going down and clicking the little menu button. And we want the comms panel because we're trying to communicate to the base. There we go. So now our comms panel changed. Like I say, the workaround of getting out of your seat and back in typically fixes that. And I can click right here on this little Wi-Fi looking symbol. And as you can, as I zoom in with the mouse wheel up, you can see Levski landing control. That's the place, that's the port I went to. And it's showing me how far and it's showing me this radio button. I can click that and that will request landing. The other thing you can do, and just so you never get stuck, you know, both ways to do this. As I mentioned, if you hit F11, or you can go into the Moby Glass and it goes to the comms menu. Or again, you can do, uh, as we talked about, hitting F1 or F2, anything that gets the Moby Glass open, and then you can go down here and click on comms. F11 is just the short key to get there. Once I go there, I can click friends up here, and you see the same thing, Levski landing control. And there's a little button right here. And when I click it, it's going to say Levski landing control hailing comms link established. And it's going through and in the background, it's saying, okay, we've got a place ready for you. And then I can, as soon as I click that button, I can basically close this out. Okay. By hitting F1 and just close my mobile glass. And you can see there's a little wrench right there. Same thing as before that it's got that little uh, blue triangle that helps me identify where I'm going if I happen to get um, turned around or whatnot. And I can see that little um, gear and I need to fly down to this. Now, just a general tip on landing. I recommend, especially when you're starting off, um, I can't say this enough that I've done videos that really get down to details on this, but just generally steering, if you put your angle on 90 degrees, which you can see right here is your angle meter, I know when it's on 90 degrees, my ship is facing straight up and down. Okay, let me back away so you guys can see how this looks. You can see my ship is facing straight up and down. This is a spaceship, remember, not a airplane. So again, there I'm on 90 degrees. If you wanna save yourself some pain, you can click your right shift and it locks you from being able to turn. As you can see, I'm trying to turn my ship and it's not doing anything because it's locked. And then I use my uh, strafing keys, control, left control goes down and then uh, use A to strafe sideways. And I'm gonna rotate my ship and get aligned with that little wrench. 
once you get aligned with that wrench space bar to strafe up and i get right dead centered on that wrench or the center of the pad i'll show you why i do that in just a second if you haven't watched the video on landing and this works for any size ship at all so this is always a safe way that i can fly straight down in here get down to where i'm close to the hangar floor and then i'm going to click that uh, right shift to unlock my movement and just rotate straight up and there we go you can see my angle meter i'm taking right back to zero which you can see right here i'm back at zero so i know i'm perfectly level i can also then hit uh, my landing gear and just strafe straight down at this point and I'm gonna be centered on that pad in a way that's really hard to do manually without using some kind of uh, relative calculations like I just did. So I'm gonna go F4 to show you how accurately the ship is landed within the center of the hangar and uh, left to right good. You know, everything is about as perfect as you can get with that landing. Now, there you go. And I'm gonna go back into the uh, view of the ship, excuse me, and we're going to hit F1, go into Moby Glass, and we were going to go to that wrench down here, which is where we refuel, if you remember. So this is kind of tricky, but I'm going to do one at a time. Uh, you can repair your ship because you're going to get general damage. I didn't impact anything or whatnot. You can see I already have damage to my ship, not major. It cost me eight credits um, to repair it, but I want to refuel hydrogen first. And the reason I'm doing that, I'm gonna click that and hit confirm. And then I wanna watch my Moby glass right here. Look at it, it went from 95 to 100, so my fueling is done. That was a very little bit of fuel, so it went in there very quickly. But if you're in a larger ship or you gotta refuel more, don't just click the button and leave. Click it and watch that meter go all the way up to full because it takes time, just like fuel in your fuel tank in your vehicle same thing with these spaceships so let it roll up to till you see 100 or some cases 99 percent and then i'm going to go back in and do quantum fuel same thing f1 going back to the wrench and i'm going to click refuel quantum now on the older hud i don't have the visual to watch it refuel i'll show you how to get to that as well so i hit confirm and then i immediately hit f2 to travel and you can see over here, here's my current fuel and see it go up. It needs to get up to around 583. So there we go. Now I'm all the way fueled up, but some ships again are really big fuel tanks. It takes a considerable amount of time to fuel those, but you wanna make sure you do that before you um, do anything else. Now at this point, since I've requested landing and whatnot, I'm free to hop out of my ship and I've got a few different ways. Um, if I go, to exit my ship, depending on whatever type of ship you have. Again, this is a highly recommended starter ship if you can afford a little bit of extra pledge money. And then I can go into the space station and actually visit and go explore around at that point because here's my customs elevator and whatnot that I can go say, okay, oh, that's how I go somewhere, cool. And then I can go inside that space station and move around. So going back to the, um, other point, I don't have to let my ship be stored. If I just leave it there for a while, it'll automatically store eventually. But I've already refueled. I was just using this place as a refuel stop. So I'm gonna go get right back in my ship. And as you remember, that's the gun that I changed right there. You can see it is changed on the outside of the ship as well. Color of the ship has changed because I did that paint change. All right, so now I'm getting ready to take off. Now, different from a pad takeoff, and this is why I wanted to do this as well on this video, is I use the same comms menu, but I'm gonna use Z to free look up. And you can see that hangar is closed. If I try to take off right now, I'm screwed. Um, and that is the slight difference between taking off from a hangar or a pad. Now I'm gonna hit that comms menu again, or again, I can do the I can certainly do it this way. We'll we'll go ahead and use this since we used the other way before. And we're gonna say Levski Landing Control. You'll see the menu pop up here to say, okay, we're communicating back and forth. And then I can watch the hangar open above me by free looking up. Be careful because this is an extremely fast opening hangar. Some hangars take a while to get going. So there we go. I've got um, 
Uh, if you haven't watched the other video, you just saw that I clicked R to release my rectangle. That way I know that I'm not sitting way up here, or sitting off center, but I am ready to fly off again. My hanger is open, it's good to go. I'm just gonna strafe straight up. Now, this is the pain of so many people taking off with hangers or landing in them. Don't touch your mouse, don't touch anything, just touch your space bar and strafe straight up and get out of there, you'll be safe. If you try to touch your space bar and do all this, or you try to uh, motivate yourself around, you're likely to hit hanger walls, get very, very frustrated. Just make sure you push strafe straight up. And then once you're at a safe height, which you can always back out initially to see like, okay, yeah, I'm at a safe height. Then I'm gonna hit F, um, I'm, excuse me, I'm gonna hit N to retract my landing gear and get myself into flight mode. And there you go. That is basically taking off landing uh, from a hangar, from a pad, how to request landing, how to request takeoff from a um, hangar instead of a pad. Pads you can just fly away from, hangars you gotta do things differently. As we selected that mission earlier, you can see it's highlighted on the map. I can try to manually jump straight to that, but again, I highly, highly, highly recommend always going into your map and locating yourself as opposed to manually flying, especially at first as you get started. There are times, workaround note, there are times where you can't map to something and there's a couple reasons. Sometimes it's buggy and it won't let you jump and you need to manually jump to some other point and it'll kind of reset your quantum drive so you can map correctly. And then sometimes in the map, it's frankly uh, obstructed by asteroids and when you try to map to it, you get really frustrated with, hey, I can't click on this or I can't click on that. And it's because there's asteroids blocking your way and you need to change your approach, you know, go to a different jump point, move around in a circle around that location to be able to set the route. Okay, so there we go. We've got it started off. We are on our way um, to uh, do our first pickup, which is very, very important. We'll, we'll get into that in future episodes, but we are now on our way to do our first pickup. We've traveled across part of the galaxy, part of the solar system, and we've now refueled and taken off and we're ready to go on our first mission. So here we go, we're taking off, we're headed that way, but that is it for this video. Again, if you have questions or there's some specific things I didn't cover, let me know. Let me know if the key uh, mapping or the on-screen tool tips that show you what keys I'm pressing are helpful. If, there, if there's something else you would rather see there, anything goes put it in the comments below I'd be glad to help you out this is mostly to get new players up and going in the verse so you're not getting disappointed so often by going hey i don't know how to do this my ship ran out of fuel i wrecked it i did all this other stuff no worries we'll show you how to deal with all of those things and if you have any questions please let me know i'll be glad to enter it into a video well, that's it for now this is dragon x signing out fly safe in the verse and we'll see you around thank you so much for stopping by